All right, so in the process of me still cleaning up, I'm going to show you how to make one of these bad boys. There we go. There we are. A little bit more light on the subject. So one of these bad boys. It's a CRX key, obviously. Very sturdy, very stable, and it rolls very well. I do say so myself. Kind of turns just a little, but this was my first custom I ever made, so of course it's going to be a little messed up. But still, considering it's my first custom, you can see all the details. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Yeah, see all the details on the engine? I did all those. And all the details on the dash, gauges, seat belts. And then I put the matchbox wheels on it. I think they came off a fire truck. And I did the exhaust. That was my aluminum paint at the time because I didn't have a chrome pen. Now I have this awesome chrome pen. One millimeter tip does awesome. You can detail the shit out of anything. Anyways, so this is my ignition key for my 89 CRX. Okay, we're gonna go a little different today because usually. You want to have a duplicate key before doing this. So, this is my duplicate spare key for my car. So, I have one. And I'm going to make another right now. But, this one is going to be my door key. New CRX model just came out. So, I'm going to use this actual 88 year body style of my CRX instead of the first gen to make my door key. This is how we start. I only have one extra door key, so my extra door key is going to be my CRX key now. I'm not going to paint it because that would make the whole process a lot longer, but to get it short and sweet, you can paint it and make it look like your car. This is one that I did that actually looks just like my car, but I don't want it to be a key, I just want it to be my replica. Those are the same wheels I got and everything. This one's in the process of being done, just has to be topped off, detailed. I have to sand the wheels a little because there's a little rubbish on the center. Axles just aren't quite white enough. But I just have to detail it and then she'll be done. Keep it simple. We're going to just drill a little part, show you how to cut the key, what you, what's required, what makes it easier, what makes it harder. Um, I have a pretty cool setup here. I have a jewelry setup. So I got this jewel. It's a jewelry file. You can get this on eBay for like 12 or 15 bucks, and it comes with the clamp. Well, that's why mine came a little vice. So, drill your car apart first. So, after time lapse, this is what you got. You got your two rivets drilled out, and then, for those of you who've never customized Hot Wheels, you just pop it apart. Just pull on the wheels, and it comes right off. Now, because this is obviously my key, I'm going to pick some real riders. These are off of a Matchbox car, but they're rubber wheels. I think they came off a Mini Cooper. And I'm going to put them on this because they're red with the chrome, or the gold center. So, it makes it look cool. So, just to give you an idea what it'll look like. Very cool. Custom key. Now, obviously, you gotta cut a lot of this off. So, you wanna make sure your measurements are precise. So, because this is a door key, it doesn't have to go in the ignition, you really don't have to worry about measuring to clear the turn. Because as long as you got that much out, you get, it only goes in that far. So you don't have to worry about nothing. Just make sure you have enough room so you don't scratch your car, obviously. Um, so, what I do here, get a sharp one. I have one. All right, so, now that we've got our key, we've got this, we gotta take these wheels out. Now, I found a couple of ways to take these wheels out. One of the easiest ways in the plastic bottom castings is to get this little a flathead guy, take the flathead guy, wedge it right in between the little prongs, 
and then just kind of turn it clockwise one way and then wedge it in the other way. Turn it counterclockwise and then you widen them out. Wheels come out no problem. Then, bada bing, you can pull that right out. You do cool. this. I'm gonna have to mark out where this hole goes. This little peg has to go through the key. And then this casting is gonna close on the bottom. So you're gonna have to grind out room in the grill, depending on here where, and the bumper, depending on how far yes. up you want it to go. Taking this, you wanna get an idea of height-wise, how far in on the key do you wanna go? Because if you want extra, you can literally cut it straight and have a straight arrow, not even have all this extra crap. So, ideally, I'd want the bumper to be right where this bottom line is. That's ideally where I'd want the bumper to be, right there, once the key is all on. So, essentially, you're gonna want this hole about right there above that line. Taking the same size, not first, but secondly, you gotta get one smaller bit. You wanna look at the size of this versus the size of this. You wanna get it to the closest size you can without maxing out past the size. So I think I'm gonna start with this one. 764. So, going down a little bit from 1164. You want this key being in the center of the car, make it in the center of the car. Okay, so cross hatch it, eyeball it, whatever you want to do, measure it, millimeter, micrometer, I don't know, I don't care. Obviously I wouldn't recommend doing this on your desk, but this is my workbench. This is half my desk and half my workbench. This has my workbench, the other half is my desk. So, taking your hole and your bit that matches your size just slightly, you want to drill the hole all the way through, right on that X. All right, there's that hole. Now, if all goes to according to plan, this hole will not fit through that key. See, it doesn't fit. That's the goal. You want it to be too small. That's just me. That's how I make these, okay? Now, that you got your hole center marked, you don't need all this extra key. So that's the next step. Finding out how much width you have to clear because you're either going to have to cut off this or you're going to have to file this down flat. Okay, so taking this as a measurement guide, my handy dandy pen, you want to eyeball how wide it can be. So essentially, it can stay the same width and be good to go because that'll clear right in the middle. Perfect. So. Making it the same width, being good to go, you can legitimately just straight line it on each side and be good to go. There's my straight lines. Okay, didn't measure it, just grabbed something flat, and boom, you saw it. Okay, now this is the other tricky, tricky part because you gotta have the right one. Now, because I'm a stickler and I don't like things in my eyes, eye protection. No matter how non-power the tool is. This is still a bandsaw and it can still sh throw metal shavings in your eyes because that's physics and that's how it happens. Okay. So, after much sawing, much time lapse, this is what you're left with. Now, if you look at the other side, it's way crooked, but that don't matter because we can fix that. So that's one side. I just flattened it out, smoothed it out, made it so it wasn't as sharp. I did the same with the other side. most of this will be inside the car. Now that you can kind of get a visual, that's how it's going to lay out, okay? Now, the more perfect you drill this hole, 
the more part of this frame casting it will become. Like to the point where you can shake the hell out of it and this won't come off. So, now that you've got this part completed, you're going to want to tamper out this hole a little bit. Taper it out, whatever. Now that it barely fits over the first groove, okay, you see that? It stops. There's a gap, okay? This is the tricky part because if you want it to fit perfect, you have to countersink halfway through the bigger size without re-drilling this perfect hole you just made. This perfect hole is going to be the bottom. Once you countersink halfway through, it's going to slide perfect on that little notch. You see what I mean in one second. So, now that it's perfectly wedged on there, it would wedge better if I could push it up a hair higher. So, this is what we're going to do. You want to mark it the easiest way possible. So this is fresh paint, red paint on top of that. This gap is not going to be made very likely. So, what we're going to use here is another one of my favorite tools, a little file. Sturdy, not moving. Now this is the tricky part because you gotta sand. Without scratching the rest of your paint. And only make sure you're or sorry, filing the front only. Time lapse. my little trick. Socket so you smash it against and you got something to press onto. So <clears throat> now I need to drill this hole out a little bit more. Told you this is a process. It's not just like making fucking dinner. And all you're really looking at is making sure that it sits firmly against the body. And it kind of wedges on there. Now I don't know how much of a cheater I am because I have all these cool tools, but have a round file it helps make it wedge better. Now that you got it pretty much flat and lined up with the body line, once it's bottomed out, okay. I just want to test fit a hundred million times because the more you test fit, the more happy you'll be with your product. I think I'm gonna use JB Weld on this one, but. <laughs> Clipping a car back together will not be as easy as it was because you're going to want to clip on that metal piece. There's nothing there to clip. So, let's mark this. Lined up. Sandwiched in there where it goes. You want to mark where you're going to sand. So, let's see what we can take off now. Alright, so here we are back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to file off the front where the key is going to go through the body. But first, we need to cut it off because that's a lot of filing if you need to cut something. I didn't have my diamond. Like I said, this diamond saw is awesome. It, it makes the hardest tasks become not even that hard at all. So use it when you can if you have it. If you don't have one, get one. It's easy to get. Ask me if I have a god complex. Let me tell you something. God. And that would have been like 20 minutes of filing. Now that you got the main section cut out, you just go straight back. Now you can do this with a Dremel, but if you fuck up, you gotta start all over. So it's just way easier to do it by hand. A little bit of time. Work it down. 